talk a bit about memory, how they're formed, how we hold on to them. Okay, yeah, and I'm, I can't, I'm thinking about bing bong. Um, <laughs> so, so there's different kinds of memory. Um, there's, there's memory for names and things and information. There's memory for how to do things. Um, and there's short-term memory and long-term memory. So memory that, that's short-term or working memory, that goes into a place in your brain called the hippocampus. And if it's reinforced in some way, so if you practice it, or if there's a big emotion involved when that piece of information comes into the short-term memory, like most people remember where they were when JFK was killed, um, or where they were when the towers came down. Like if there's a big emotion, that'll kick short-term memory into long-term memory. Um, and it, this involves you know, neurotransmitters like glutamate and receptors called NMDA receptors. And there's a whole molecular cascade that is involved in capturing the, the sight, sound, feeling, information of that memory and locking it into place. Um, with a disease like Alzheimer's, what happens is you lose access to short-term memory first, so that disease begins in the hippocampus, and then it will spread beyond that to long-term memory. So if you know someone affected by Alzheimer's, they lose access to their most recent memories and personal history first, and will have difficulty with remembering five minutes later what we talked about. And this is why they're often very comfortable talking about what happened 40 years ago, because that's, those long-term memories are safe for the moment. They're in a different neuroanatomical place in the brain. Location matters in your brain. It's in, uh, location informs the job that, 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 that part of the brain will do. And of course, we, we were talking before, Dacker, about this idea of the foundational memory that is explained so well in Inside Out. And maybe you can talk, talk that through for us a little bit, because when I saw the film, I started to think about that, and I started to think about the memories that form me and the memories that we form over time. And it's, it's, it's remarkable how powerful they are and how they stay with you no matter what else happens in your life. Yeah, you know, and, and Lisa really put her finger on it, which is that, you know, one of the principles of what we remember is that, is it emotionally charged and does it have a kind of a powerful emotional component? So in the film, you know, she remembers this spectacular young friendship and skipping down the sidewalk, which I thought was really wonderfully rendered. So we know early in life, and there's suggestive evidence of this, that these early core relational experiences of, of laughing with a, a father or certain affection from a mom or a best friend will stay with you in what your identity is like. But I think one of the real paradoxes of the mind is that as powerful as those early memories are in structuring who we are as, as people, um, they, it's also hard to remember the past. And the film talks about and shows how our current emotions guide what we think of the past, what we think of a political event or the, a, a very dramatic period in our lives. Our current feelings are often, science shows, more powerful in driving what we remember than what our actual experiences were like at the time. And that's just one of these great paradoxes of identity. Really.